thought I'd have a look today at uh, power cylinders for Stirling engines. Uh, I've got a cylinder here that's uh, fabricated from a piece of cast gun metal, called cast gun metal, um, silver soldered onto a block of brass to make the mounting flange. Uh, I've just bored it with um, an inserted tip boring tool um, and given it a very light lap. Um, and just looking at the quality of the fit now between the cylinder and the piston. Now, the piston itself is a piece of continuous cast gun, uh, cast iron. I've fitted a, a bronze gudgeon block in the bottom of it there, uh, and that's important because otherwise it wouldn't seal when I do this test. Okay, so here's the piston in the bore, and you can see that it is pretty much free to slide through there under its own weight. It's a little sticky. Now, this test will only work if everything is clean and dry. It won't work if there's any trace of oil on there. Uh, and you see that just drops straight through then. There you are, dropping straight through. Now if I place that flange on the piece of paper, put the piston in, immediately there's resistance there, the air trapped underneath the piston is sufficient to stop it dropping. And if you lift it up, it drops straight through. Now, Engines with a piston fit like that will run um, and run well and run for a long time. Um, the biggest problem, I think that the beginner or the person who goes to making Stirling engines after experience with steam engines is getting that fit right. A steam engine Perhaps it's got 15 pounds per square inch or more pushing on that piston when it's working. A Stirling engine would be lucky to have half a pound. And any friction there is going to be enough to stop it working. You can see it from the bottom there. It slides under its own weight. That's what we want to try and achieve. Now, there you go, you see it falling under its own weight. That's the type of fit that you need. And if you seal the base on there like that, it sits there on the air, you push it down, it'll stay where you put it, and then you lift it up and it drops out. It's uh, you know, nice, easy fit. That's what we're trying to achieve. The displacer is turned from aluminium alloy. It's very thin wall, about 17 thou in this case. It will need to be supported with a split collet in the chuck, otherwise it will collapse while you're turning it. Uh, the outside diameter of this part is about a 32nd of an inch radial clearance on the uh, bore of the displacer chamber and the length of it needs to be such that it's just shy of the end of the chamber at top and bottom centres. The little cap is uh, a turning job, uh, aluminium alloy again. Thin out as much weight as possible. I've used a trepanning tool to hollow this one out. Uh, total weight of this displacer cap and the tube as it were is about 12 grams. Um, I stick the cap in the end of the tube using aerodite. There's three little uh, rings. Just touch it with the edge of the parting tool just to make these little grooves that the adhesive can sit in. Uh, I use the old blue traditional aerodite, not the repeat version, and I've never had any problems with this. I thought I'd have a look today at one or two of the issues that surround Stirling engines. 
and why they might not run as you want. And the first test that you should always try with your engine, when it's cold, just see if it will bounce on compression. And that's bouncing very nicely. This engine's stone cold and you can see there's a good bounce on compression there. So that's your first test. If it doesn't bounce there's two possible reasons. One you've got air leaks and there's no compression or the other is you've got too much friction in the the bearings, the cylinder, and the gland here. Or it could be that something's out of alignment and there's a, a bind somewhere. Whatever, if it won't bounce, it won't go. No bounce, no go. Next thing, fuel. Uh, these engines I find run on ordinary methylated spirits. Uh, make sure before you go near refueling an engine that the wick is out and uh, just put a little in there to demonstrate it now. So put that maths well out the way before you even think about lighting anything up and if you're running more than one engine at once perhaps on an exhibition be careful, don't refuel near the burning flames, um, not a good idea. So we'll just light it up now and it shouldn't take very long to warm through. Um, with an engine like this uh, that's all you need is a flame, don't be tempted to put a blowtorch on it or a gas burner or anything like that. Uh, they don't need it. Um, this one has got an aluminium displacer and it would be quite feasible that you could melt that displacer. So there she goes. And what you generally find is that they will pick up as they sort of warm through a bit. Um, air-cooled engines like this one uh, will eventually stop if the uh, cold end gets too warm. Um, Water-cooled engines don't usually suffer from that sort of problem. Um, and really there's not much more to say about it. Uh, something they don't like is drafts and uh, it's always helpful if you can arrange uh, a little, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, windshield to go around the flame. I won't put this one there now because the engine's running nicely. But uh, they don't they don't like it if there's a draft that blows the flame away from the cylinder. Something I find it tends to run better with the flame about there. If you think, oh, I'm, I, I'll get the flame right to the very end. I don't find that runs so well after a bit. At the moment, this engine is not showing any variation in speed because I'm moving the flame around because there's enough heat in that hot end. It, if I take the flame right away, it'll carry on running for a bit. because there's, there's quite a lot of heat residing in the hot metal. Um, You'll notice that this engine's running quietly, there's no tinking or knocking noises. That's a good sign because it means that the displacer isn't hitting the end of the cylinder um, and everything's comfortable and happy. In terms of lubrication, um, I've already oiled this engine up, but all it requires is a drop of ordinary light machine oil. Uh, I wouldn't use anything like uh, one of the sort of spray water dispersants or anything like that that some people swear by. Um, I find that just a bit of ordinary light machine oil is the business. And uh, 
there we are. Um, that just run down on its own for a moment. This is the um, the first afternoon this engine's been running. It's run for about 20 minutes in total since since it was built. And uh, that uh, knocking you can hear now is, is is compression. It's not metal metallic things coming banging onto each other. So there we have it. Um, little simple Stirling engine, uh, what we call a gamma configuration engine, uh, running very straightforwardly. <laughs>